Hey everyone, welcome back. So for this one, I went fully 2D, still exploring this lineless approach to my character designs. These are not for my upcoming film, this was something separate. I got inspired to do some quicker motions after seeing this martial artist on Instagram doing some crazy kicks and stunts. So I looked at his movements and it's useful to have some reference for this kind of stuff. I'm no martial artist myself, so I let the pros guide me here. I thought I would keep the pace a bit slower on this one and show you a bit more of the art process. When animating full body characters, I start with a very simple stickman figure that just represents the shape of the body. It's a bit more fleshed out than the standard stickman we all know, but I don't want to spend too much time on each frame here. The important bit is where each limb go and how the motion flows. I have to say it's a great practice of anatomy, at the same time as it's a good study of motion. Maybe you're practicing drawing and doing all these studies of the human figure. Why not sequence them and turn them into an animation? Here you have to twist and turn your subject and be able to render it in all sorts of angles. And this process obviously gets easier the quicker and better you get at drawing these things. But as I said before, having some reference is still super useful. Unless you are some incredible master of movement, I think a reference will always help generate a better result than at least my imaginary library of poses ever could. Something I find is worth mentioning is animating this stuff takes time. I find that I have to be very patient with it and slowly work it into something I like. At start, you know, nothing really looks good, but I try to ignore that, as I think we often want things to go quickly and we want to see results straight away. I'm really trying to work on pushing that feeling away and accepting that some things actually do take time and I also allow it to take some time. This one took something like two times three hour sessions to make and at first maybe that sounds like a lot, but when I think about it, there are many evenings I just spend looking at my phone or on YouTube or Netflix or something where six hours just fly by. I'm quite interested about how we sometimes think certain tasks seem way too time consuming when at the same time we gladly just sit down and do absolutely nothing. I guess it comes down to what we find difficult and how we like to spend our energy. It's easier to get the quick snack than to bake the cake. I don't think that's the same but let's, let's go with that. But I know that when I'm working on something and put the hours in it's almost always worth it. And I ask myself, why am I not always doing that? I guess what I'm saying is I'm trying my best to be as productive as possible and just accept that some things are time consuming. All right, enough of that. So what's going on here? Uh, I'm working out the key poses that will define this character's motion. First the keyframes and then some in-betweens later to make it smoother and obviously a bit slower. I think this part is probably the most challenging as it sets up the whole scene. Most of the decisions are taken here, maybe not so much design, but if you already have characters designed that will, you will have to animate, then that should not be too brain depending. Um, for this example I actually didn't have them designed, so for me that took some extra energy later on to get them to you know, look like something. Uh, but I think you get my point, this step defines the scene. The rest is just rendering which can be done while let's say listening to some music or podcasts or maybe right now you're rendering your animation listening to me. Let me show you some quick tips for animating in Photoshop just to get this a little bit more informative. I'm using a video timeline the timeline can be accessed here. I'm drawing on a video layer and they can be found up here. I move forward and backwards between my frames using the right and left arrow key on my keyboard. You might have to tick 
this on, saying that the timeline should use the right shortcuts. Also, I am animating in 12 frames per second, which can be set here. Set your timeline frame rate before creating the video layer, or else your video layer will keep the default frame rate after you changed it in the timeline. However, not to worry, it can still be changed by selecting your layer and then going here under interpret footage and there set it to be the same as your timeline. Another thing, so what if I have drawn this and want to move a specific element or the whole image, let's say, within the frame. Then I find the best way is to make a selection and then moving that. If you don't make a selection, you actually move the entire video layer with all the frames before and after. If you want something static in the frame, like a background or a ground plane or whatever when animating, you can use a normal Photoshop layer for that. It can be trimmed in the timeline as well, if you only want it to appear at a specific point. All right, back to the animation. So we got the first character motion down. Uh, I had not planned on animating the second character at this point. This was more an exercise that then evolved into the final shot that you saw at the beginning. So I started rendering the model I had here with some colors. I'm using the animation I just did as a reference to then drive the finished model on a layer below. As I said before, this was not a character I had any design for, so I started off exploring one frame and getting a feel for what he could look like. I then had to go through the long process of adding that to every frame of the animation. To speed things up, I focus on specific colors and areas one at a time. Here I started out coloring the legs for each frame. By not switching colors or my focus, I can be a lot more efficient and get through all the frames quicker. I then went on to the upper body and the feet. And finally getting the details like the hair, beard and face in. For the second character, I could use the first one as a reference in terms of how he should behave. I wanted him to be a bit more passive and then take the big kick at the end. So I did the same process here, getting a rough stickman character down that solves all the questions of where his limbs go for each frame. I decided to give him a non-human design. He's made out of some kind of black liquid and I thought that could be a cool way to exaggerate the impact as he gets kicked, having particles fly off him and so on. I'm not sure he deserved it though. So a few hours later, I had this full shot. Looking at it though, it was over a bit too quickly. My original idea was to add another shot to emphasize the impact. That's why I didn't let the motion play out, but rather cut right at the moment he got hit. I first thought I would cut it to like some kind of exploding shot of some kind, but I couldn't make that really work and I played around with a few versions, but then my girlfriend said that she thought it could be cool to zoom in and go into like a slow motion. So I tried that and really liked how that worked out. I made a quick mock-up first in After Effects using the puppet tool to get some movement on the last frame of the animation. I then rendered that out and used it as a reference as I got those frames done in Photoshop, having fun with animating some liquids.
All right, that's the final animation here. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I will get back to working on my film again, so expect more background and character animation episodes. Big shout out to my patrons for their support as well. Make sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel to follow along as I make more animations, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.